sentire media. Ciao a tutti and welcome to Venice Talks, a podcast series dedicated to Venice in Italy. I'm your host, Monica Cesarato, a Venetian food and travel blogger. Join me as I share my insider knowledge to help you explore Venice at 360 degrees. In this weekly podcast, we'll dive into the heart of the city, uncovering hidden stories and connecting with the people who make Venice unique. The artisans, the writers, the fashion designers, the bloggers, the journalists and more. Let's break free from cliché and discover the true essence of Venice, not just the monuments, but the vibrant people, the Venetians. Experience Venice the right sustainable way. You can find me on my blog at www.monicacesarato.com and across all social media platforms. Enjoy the episode and let's journey through Venice together. Welcome back to Venice Talks, Season 2, Episode 22. Hi everybody and welcome back to Venice Talks. I know I've been away for a few days, uh, you know, it's August, uh, it's uh, holidays for many people, so it's not easy to find people that want, as every year, uh, to come on the show because of course everybody is busy or away. But finally, I found somebody that is uh, hardworking in Venice and said, yes, okay, I'm going to talk to you. And it is Michela Bortolozzi from Relight. Ciao Michela, how are you? Ciao, I'm very good. Uh, super hot in Venice, but we're happy. Summer I make know. everybody happy. I know, it <laughs> is so hot, isn't it? I mean, I, I mean, okay, let's get it straight. We, <laughs> we remember this summer's this hot because Italy has always been this hot. But unfortunately, this year we went from 15 degrees in June to 45 <laughs> in July. It was like, what? Yeah, crazy. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. Okay, first of all, Michela, who are you? What do you do? Uh, so, I'm a woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we know you're a woman. We can hear from uh, your voice. You're a young woman. Yeah. Born and raised in Venice. Oh, a real, I'm real, real a, Venetian. One of a few real left. Real Venetian, yeah, unfortunately. But no, we unfortunately. <laughs> No, one of the few left for that. Ah, in that sense. sense. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, yes but we try to resist it to bring back people. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I study art. Mm-hmm. Art is my life. Uh, is my way to communicate. Mm-hmm. And so I study in Venice, but then I did. I had many experience abroad. Mm-hmm. Uh, and after wh- my... Wh- where, where about abroad? Where did you go and how long did you live there for? So I'm a traveler since Mm -hmm. ever and every summer, the three months in summer, I used to travel all around the world. But when I started to study art, I started to contact big artists because I was working in big museum in Venice, setting up the exhibition. So I get in contact with amazing artists and I Uh went with them. uh, I spent like six years changing place every three months. So I travel, see changing places materials and okay. artists so I had my I improved my art of course not in Venice unfortunately because I escaped from Venice and oh, then but you kind of well, well, <laughs> you kind of got uh, you know you open yourself to the world so you 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 soaked up uh, all the uh, you know all the skills and you know new ideas from other parts of the world that is something that Venice has always done in a way no it's true, so, it's true. Yeah. So you, you did so... what Venetians used to do in the past anyway. <laughs> so, you know, yes. you're a Marco, so... po- Marco Pola. Uh, Marco, Marco Pola. Pola, nice. Mar- this is yeah, a good Marco point <laughs> to start a new project. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, my... how yeah. long did you do that for going, uh, traveling around, migrating, vagabonding around the world? Uh, so for six years, I was really working every three months, changing places in Europe, uh, Central wow. America, a lot of Africa, and keeping tradition, story, new technique, uh, storytelling through objects. Wow, uh, every three months. I mean, on a, with just one luggage, I assume, because if you move so often, uh, you don't yes. want to have much. <laughs> no, really, but it wasn't easy because I love to buy stuff everywhere like handmade stuff everywhere but and so yeah, how did you move everything every three months 
shipping. <laughs> wow! Yeah, but for so long, for three years. Oh wow! No, oh, I was uh, I wasn't buy much, uh, and then uh, when I finished my six year, I started traveling just to bring my stuff around. Ah, okay. Yes. But still, but still, it's uh, very interesting. Very mm -hmm. interesting. Wow! You and... must have uh, you must have gained so much experience and so much. Uh, it must have opened your mind so much. Yes, and for that, after um, I did a master in uh, sustainable design in Marrakesh, okay, I opened completely my mind because I realized that all that six past months, six past year, bring me in my project that I'm doing now, thanks to the sustainable design master I did in Marrakesh, where right. I had to project an uh, object. Mm -hmm. together with a student from Marrakesh mm -hmm. and artisan from Marrakesh and this object should work in uh, Italy Europe as in the African North African world mm -hmm. and through that object I had to storytelling something tell something about tradition in Morocco wow so I started, so I started thinking I used to be and I used to want to be a sculptor, mm -hmm. but then it, it is not easy to live on sculptures. Yeah, of course. Only yeah. sculptures, yes. Yeah, of course. And that made me say, I cannot lose art because I can keep, thanks to the storytelling, the art part. So mm -hmm. emotions and stuff. But then I can add a little functionality on my mm -hmm. object that the sculptures doesn't have. And so make a design object, like sort of design object, because it's not an high-tech design mm -hmm. product, but mm -hmm. like an object that have a minimal functionality, but behind have a big message. That mm -hmm. is something that they bring from art. And so from that, I decide to come back to Venice, mm. because after traveling so much, hearing people, wow, you are from Venice, Venice is amazing, why are yeah. you not there anymore? I start feeling, why everybody love Venice and I hate Venice so much? <laughs> maybe, I maybe think we I all go, we all go through, when we <laughs> when we move out of our own town, we all go through the period where we can, there is a reason why we leave generally yeah. and there is a reason why you come back. Yeah. <laughs> always, always. Uh, and so I felt I need to stop give to other country. I want to give yes. back something to Venice. Uh -huh. And I also thought, if I come back in Venice, I need to do a project because if not, after a couple of months, I get bored and I start to travel again. Uh -huh. So I bring all my experience I had during the past years. Uh -huh. And I open my shop in Venice called okay. Real Life Venice. With stop the, I stop. Let's stop. Let's stop there. Let's start. With, okay. That was how many years ago? Four. Oh, oh. Because I was just right in the Morocco. middle of COVID. Yes, I was living in Morocco. Like, oh, at the okay. beginning, I was thinking I quit with the art, I quit with Venice. I went on top of a mountain in Morocco, working uh -huh. with climbing and yoga. Jesus uh, Christ, you've gone through yeah. everything, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> You're a really, a real, <laughs> like, a hippie kind of person, no? <laughs> yeah, I like that. And then I started to build the art festival in the mountain in Morocco. But then uh -huh. COVID came, the ambassade contacted me. Maybe it's better if you come back in Italy. Okay. So I said, okay, it's going to be just for a couple of months. And then I go back in Morocco doing my, my things. Uh -huh. But then I get stuck in Venice. And of course, then shopping mall in Venice contacted me to show my product. Mm -hmm. And from that, I realized that the people love my stuff. And so mm -hmm. I thought, why am not open a place? <laughs> mm -hmm. And that was and... the first place that you had back near, uh, ever back near Orto, yes? Uh, the it one was, that I came uh, years ago, yeah? Like the first, first, first one was inside the house of an artist. Oh, okay. Because, yes, I from a day to another one, I started to have uh, requests. So I want your piece, I want your piece, I want your piece. And I said, where am I going to make it? And so I asked to an artist friend to give me a little corner of his uh, studio. Mm -hmm. And I started to make my things there. Then I realized that the people want to come to see me and meet me and have a chat with me. So I found a place in 
uh, more close by Madonna del Lord in Campo yeah. dei Mori. So when I came to see you uh, for the interview for the event that we did it oh, was on a few yeah. years ago now, you just uh, you just actually opened there. I didn't realize. Yes. I thought you had been there for a while. Oh no, 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 no. It was a few months. Oh, <laughs> all right. Oh my God, you were set up like if you've been there for ages. I mean, yeah, I mean, the no, no. place was <laughs> full of everything. In the, you know, <laughs> I mean, I've seen the new place now is even better. So <laughs> let's go back to what actually you do because we keep talking about your shop we keep talking about your experiences but what's most important about you is the product that you do because it's so unique so oh, different so beautiful so I don't know uh, I think it's because that probably is so unique that makes it even I don't know it's so particular go on tell Thank people you. what you actually do yeah so born this project called Relight Venice that the idea is to give back the light authenticity to the town, the focus on craft, traditions, and people and Venetians. Mm -hmm. And the first product came in my mind was an idea I had at the university. Mm -hmm. So I make a lollipop, big, huge lollipop in sugar. Mm -hmm. the of uh, Venice architectures, mainly the column of Doge's Palace uh, yep. building. And the idea of this big lollipop reminded me of how we Venetian call Venice, like Venice Land Amusement Park. Yeah. And while you are eating this pretty nice uh, lollipop that looks like glass because it's very transparent, mm -hmm. uh, at the end remain only the stick. Mm. So the question is, what do you want to do? You want to eat Venice, like consuming Venice? Mm. Or you want to keep it preserving and supporting which mm -hmm. kind of tourist you want to be or Venetian you want to be? You want to be a traveler that support uh, or mm -hmm. a tourist that consume? Mm -hmm. And that was my main topic. So like uh, have an object that you can use, mm -hmm. but behind have a big message and make you think what you want to do with mm -hmm. this product. Because then the lollipop, you can buy it again. But if mm -hmm. we consume Venice, we cannot buy Venice again or of we course. build Venice okay. again. And I got to say, your lollipops are so nice that uh, sh sh really you shouldn't eat them because they are so pretty anyway. <laughs> they <laughs> should just be kept like that because as their own, they are beautiful. But then from then you move on to something else. Yes. I mean, at the beginning I was doing performing with lollipop. I was making in sugar a lot of little architectures, mm -hmm. uh, miniature of the town, going around the palace uh, doing a uh, performance but then uh, i start thinking maybe i need to make a product that can survive because the lollipop mm -hmm. sugar then can stay forever mm -hmm. and so born the idea of candles mm -hmm. and so i make candles with the same shape and then i grow with other shape always in the architectures mm -hmm. and the concept is always is also is always about consuming or not consuming but this mm -hmm. big candle is not just about a candle with this concept but is made with uh, soya wax or wax that coming from church of venice because mm -hmm. that was another point for me have a place have a shop start to make product but the point was to connect it with people in town mm -hmm. like start to make a kind of community because i came back to venice i had to start to re-meet people but people in art that I can meet again the day after and mm -hmm. make my little community not just people that pass by one day in town yes. yeah of course and so when I opened the shop the people start to realize that I was making candle I start finding out of the door bag of wax from chairs from house of people so really I to, yes oh, okay cool. I tried to get a new connection with the town and then I thought which, which base I can put on my candles and I thought I want to make a completely Venetian product. I want to give to people uh, something original through reels that tell other story. So I decided to go to Remeri. Mm -hmm. that are but, but other... the, yeah, but we interviewed uh, Piero uh, Dri in the first yeah, season. So, one of so, the, so the people that are listening, the Remeri, uh, uh, yeah, Remeri sorry, are the people that actually make the orlocks and the oars for the gondola. Back yes to, back to Michela <laughs> <laughs> so I went also to I used to go also to Piero mm -hmm. and he gave me all the wood waste mm -hmm. he from the making of Forcole yep. I keep with my trolley all the wood I bring it back to my studio I rework uh, the wood 
And that okay. would become uh, the base of my candle. So the people okay. that buy my candle can have also, I invite them also to go to visit Remeri, to know another part of Venetian history. Of course. Of and, course. Um, and then another thing, uh, when the, the candles start to work, in, work well, so I need help. Mm -hmm. to to make it and mm -hmm. i thought uh, which other part of venice can help me in the to for in the production mm -hmm. and i thought to involve the venetian prison in venice oh i didn't know you do this oh oh my yeah. god you, you are a uh, oh my, you keep on giving woman you keep on giving carry on with uh, uh, women, uh, and the women prison over men prison Women, women. The women prison. Okay. The, yeah. the other one, they also do a lot of other cosmetics and stuff as well, don't they? And they do also clothing for in general. Yes. They're involved quite pensieri. a lot in Venice. Yeah, cooperative Rio Terra di Pensieri that yeah. help women to, and men also to mm -hmm. restart a new life through the art and, and cool. jobs. And so I went there for a year. I did a training to the ladies. So I spent a couple of days a week training the girls, four girls. Mm -hmm. and and yes now i have my second workshop inside they are if i can see it in english my right hand yeah in the, the production and two of the first four ladies i train in now they out mm -hmm. and they come to my shop helping me here so Ooh. friday i have uh, them helping me in, in my workshop so i keep working with them and uh, this year is the second year i'm I keep doing this relationship, so I train in other ladies, mm -hmm. and that's great. With them, I am start making also soap, another product that mm -hmm. you can consume. Mm. So we are starting to understand that the most of my products are made with material you can consume, because this message, the message behind is very important. Is about consuming or not consuming. Yeah, but consuming, you're talking about all products that are produced in a sustainable way. Yes. It's not just about using them. It's about no. also be aware of what you, you know, like uh, you, you don't just do candles. You also do jewelry with the same kind of material. And yeah. I've got to say, by the way, it's beautiful and it's very light and it's really unique. But I think this was the important thing that is the message you're getting across is that, yes, you can consume and use by in a sustainable way. And you are doing that because you're literally recycling kind of everything aren't you yeah i recycling and plus uh, with the, this relationship with the venetian prison i also start to become a social project so you of also course. support another part of any so you consume but in the same time you support of course you support them but you support me as well and if you support artisan yeah and venetian you yep. help us to stay yeah so next course. time you come to to visit venice you still find people living and that is the soul of Venice. Exactly, yeah. exactly. That's what it's such an easy concept. But for <laughs> some reason, it's just not getting across to the people that should be getting it. Uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, is uh, as we say in Italian, the, the dog that he bites his own tails. If you <laughs> lose the residence, you lose uh, all the local services, you lose all the local shops. It is the only way to keep the local shops and to keep the, the, the local services is to keep a residence. But again, you got to give a way for the residents to work and live in the city. It's, yeah. it's an easy concept. And you, you prove yourself that it can be done. So if just one single person like you can do it, why isn't it any support whatsoever from the city? That's what's mind boggling, right? You know, for me, I'll, you know, but never mind. Let's not talk no. about politics. Let's talk about <laughs> <Yeah>. politics. <laughs> So how did you get into making the jewelry as well? Uh, so as I was saying, for many years I was working with different materials, mm -hmm. and so my my focus is not. I'm not an artisan that works just with one material. So. Mm -hmm like working with wool, know everything about what there is behind the wood. Mm -hmm. I'm more an artisan slash artist designer. I never know how to <laughs> An art, artie art, arti artisan. <laughs> arti art. so, oh, okay, it could be even your name, arti artisan. <laughs> what is important for me is the concept behind. The, so mm. when I have an idea, then I think about which material can, be, can work with my idea. Mm -hmm. 
So after working with this material that you can consume, I thought also, if something is so beautiful, I want to wear it. Mm. And if I wear it, then the people will see mm. my the product on me. So mm -hmm. I can, as the concept before, I can spread the message. I can spread the beauty of Venice. Mm -hmm. And if you want to wear it, you want to also respect and preserve Exactly. And so I start to make jewelry. Mm -hmm. Then I start thinking that I want to bring my project also in another country of the world. Mm -hmm. So I start to bring Real Light Venice in Morocco and in Palestine. Nice. And I, yes. And I start working with artisans in Morocco using brass metals. Yeah, I saw, on, I saw it on your website. Uh, I didn't know you did that. I saw it on the website earlier on. I love the shapes yeah. of the pendants and of the earrings. It's so, again, unique. <laughs> That's what I like about you, Michela, that uh, your design is very unique because in Venice it's easy, you know, uh, it's easy to fall into the always the same shapes. Okay, uh, it happens. Yeah. Yours is so distinctive that uh, you see something that is made by you and you go immediately, oh, okay, it's Michaela's. <laughs> <Immediately>. <laughs> That's great, thank you. Well, be, uh, and I think it's because of this part of your life that uh, has been influenced, been living abroad for so long. You do not just have the styles and shapes of Venice. You have assimilated, you know. Yeah. Yeah, the, I mix all your travels I have in my mind. Yes. And then I try to bring my concept. Like in Morocco, I work with here. I work with Venetian prison in Morocco. I work with the uh, artisan from the street mm -hmm. in Palestine. I work in a community of disabled people that mm -hmm. work with felt. So I keep and then spending time with this reality. I can listen story about tradition, style mm -hmm. of life. And from that come an idea in my mind. And mm -hmm. with these people, I work about making a project with a new object. So it's a collaboration between three reality, like my mm -hmm. idea, the craft from traditional other places uh, and story I hear during my stay. Mm -hmm. And then they mix everything and come a product. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> girl, what are the challenges of running a shop in Venice? I mean, I know them, but I want you to tell everybody because that everybody thinks, oh, oh okay, you know, everything costs so much in Venice. Tell the uh, people what the challenges are. Uh, in the meaning of... Uh... In general, all, all the challenges from the cost, from running it, from the fact that the tourist... Uh, Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Uh, they are not yeah. willing to pay for what is worth. Uh, I mean, I think uh, personally. Mm -hmm. So it's very scary to decide to open a place in Venice, mm -hmm. and it's very difficult to find the right place because uh, the space are very small and very expensive. The most of them doesn't have a toilet or mm -hmm. water that you need to make art mm -hmm. and and then you have scare because we have a lot of tourists but which kind of tourists you never exactly. know tourists that want fake stuff or they really looking for something authentic that maybe cost a little bit more mm -hmm. so the challenge is to fall mm -hmm. <laughs> on something you you don't know what is gonna happen but also for that i i found my studio not in the center of Venice, mm -hmm. but you need a bit to escape from the main road. I mean, I'm in historical part of Venice, but mm -hmm. not in the street from train station to San Marco. That is the path that everybody do. Mm -hmm. And that that was great because at the beginning I thought, oh, I'm in a place where nobody passed, crossed by. But then while I was staying in my workshop, I was a, a filter, mm -hmm. like people that decide to turn left to get in my street was the yeah. people that are curious, the people that want to discover the real Venice. The people like that in, are meant to come into your shop. Yeah, the people that yeah. decide to don't follow the mass. Yes. But say, I want to see what there is here. Yes. And I'm curious to see where is the, the real part. Like Venice, if you want to discover Venice, you need to get lost. You yeah. need to go where the other people doesn't go because where... We artists, the artisan can afford the space. Yes. We have the space. And so we can afford the space that is not right in the center. 
So mm. if you want to discover real life, you have to get lost. You have to move out from the usual path. And the people that come in my space are people that I love, are people mm. that are curious, that are they won't really know how it works Venice. They respect mm-hmm. Venice. That they love my my product because they love authenticity and something different. Well, and I you got all of this story behind you. It's not just about oh, okay, I'm making jewelry and I'm making this beautiful uh, wax uh, products. Uh, you you have a whole story. You have a whole concept behind. So you're not just selling the product. You you're no. selling a whole idea of how really uh, tourism could be sustainable if it's done in the right and correct way. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and for that also, I'm focusing a lot on the, the word souvenir. Yes. So I'm proud to make souvenir that mm-hmm. if we speak about souvenir, feel like a, an horrible word. Nobody wants that the people call their product souvenir. Mm-hmm. But if we think about souvenir what was a souvenir was an object and made the local materials buying and supporting a person bringing with you an experience in in french it means memory it doesn't it doesn't mean well now obviously it means uh, something that you bring home as a memory but uh souvenir is uh memory so should be <laughs> it should be used to be uh no and it is, it's changed because obviously through the years it's become a horrible ugly uh tourist uh, souvenir but yeah it can easily go back to be something meaningful you know yeah and is what i try to fight on like uh, give to people an experience uh, uh, uh a, a remember a, a souvenir a memory a memoir and mm-hmm. uh and have a product that is authentic so that is my um, another things I, I want to give. Mm-hmm. And uh, luckily, I'm working not only with tourists, but I'm working a lot also with Venetians. Yes, and, and, lo- and, lo- and local and local, local shops. Yeah. Uh, yes, I know. I know Be- you're also in Bottega Cini, right? Yes, a brilliant Bottega Cini. Yes. And you're amazing. also in the Fondaco, am I right? You used yes, to be. You're you still right. are. Yes. Yes, okay. I am still are. So you're not just uh, your little shop. You're actually pretty much everywhere in Venice. <laughs> oh, you're in. <laughs> I, I, from, or did I see you also in some museum shops? Yes, also in some museum. And That's also, it. I have a client, Venetian client, coming because they're looking for something to bring abroad as a gift uh-huh. that is authentic, that that can tell something about their own hometown, uh-huh. and that that's something that made me very happy because if you con- conquist, conquire, I see, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. If the, you conquer, conquer, conquer the Venetians, uh, the Venetian, I yeah. mean that is good. Yeah, <laughs> no, well, it's nice to uh, when you know when you know as they say in Italian, say o sei profeta in uh, patria or something like this, you know, that you never appreciate it back at home when you yeah. are is really meaningful. Listen, how hard was it to go back to Venice after all those travels? Uh, so I was lucky because I came back with COVID and so okay. Venice was amazing. <laughs> okay, okay. Then it was empty, no much people. I start to fall in love again with my town um, mm. because before I couldn't go back in the crowd. I, I, I couldn't feel at home anymore. Mm-hmm. But with COVID helped me to, to see that there was people living here. Mm-hmm. I start to have nice conversation and... I, I had the possibility to see Venice properly. Mm. Yes. And so it was great. Unfortunately, now everything is come back as before. But I don't I know. Have... Is it back as before? I think it's, I find it's gone back worse. As worse. In, I don't know. Uh, I find it... Well, first, first of all, there aren't that many crowds as they use, uh, the other years I noticed. Uh, and that's good. That's a good thing. But I think it's the people that are coming. It's different. I, yeah. you know, it is, uh, I don't know, is this uh, plague that is all over the world, you know, just Venice, of course, of this, uh, you know, fast, 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 fast tourists. And that is, uh, you know, you know, I've been fighting it for years, you know, since 2008, when I started writing my first blog and when two years since I've done this podcast about telling people come and stay enjoy relax yeah. why do you have to do things fast life is short enjoy the moment yeah and well instead, done. everybody's just running 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 and they miss and they miss places like yours that's the worst thing and they come and go like oh well yeah we didn't really see anything in venice 
Uh, yeah, of course, you went yeah. to San Marco. <laughs> uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, San Marco is beautiful. And I keep yeah, telling people, you should go to San Marco, but you should also uh, go to San Marco at a certain time and in a certain way, you know, yeah. because San Marco, come on, is beautiful. No, no, it's amazing. Yeah, you know, like we know that go. it's not. But if you go, I mean, even now, during the summer, never go to St. Mark's. Are you kidding me? It's crazy. But <laughs> in winter, if I can, if I'm around Venice, I always try to have a little walk by and just be stunned by, by the beauty of it. And, you know, uh, I don't know. It's just, I think, uh, we, I truly believe, believe we need to uh, re-educate people to travel. Yeah, and, I you know. Be. Yeah, I'm the agree. way you do it, you know, it's amazing. And all of this information are also on your website, right? What yes. we just talked about. Yes, Good. I have a little blog as well uh, and a newsletter where I tell all my story. That and, and, the, my and the great things, the great thing is that you go, you have a website with an online shopping. That for Venetians ah, is yes. not a given because not many <laughs> Venetians do that. And it's a beautiful. I, I had a look at before. It was really nicely done Thank but you. again in venice is not a given <laughs> to have a nice <laughs> website yeah. listen if people if somebody wants something personalized would you do that as well yes of course because all my all the product you see is handmade by me and okay. also the um, the candle for example i make the shape with clay before mm-hmm. and then i make the mold by myself so it's not mold by somewhere i okay. make mold Okay. So if you want to do or also all the brass object earrings, uh-huh. I can personalize everything. We can you Ooh. can come here, have a chat, or call me. Nice. And yeah, everything can be made. Now I'm working with a restaurant. I'm making a mold for a for a dishes, for example. Seriously, and, yeah. cool <laughs> for dishes. As in what to use them for uh, to to put the food in it. No, no, to make um, is a crazy thing. I make the mold to yeah. then put food inside and make a shape of the food. Like, a, it's not a cake, but like okay. make, I don't cool. know how to explain. Is a mold where you put liquid inside? Yeah. Like, yeah. You can eat and then this become a food. I don't know. <laughs> Le formine come? Si, sí, si. Sí. Oh, okay. The yeah. form, like the molds that you use. The mold. I make a mold for... Oh, okay, yeah. so if somebody wants to make a cake in the shape, let's say I, I should For example, like an apple, an apple, yeah. you make it in the shape. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, I want those. Oh, <laughs> that's definitely me. That's definitely me. I like that idea. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. And oh, then I'm working in a lot with hotels here. So I yeah. try to make a, a connection also with the uh, other reality in Venice because like mm-hmm. also hotels. Yeah, are the main um, connection with tourists and people. Of course, so of course. If they are giving my product to them, that they yeah. have a message that carry my product, then this me- message can be spread. Wow. And and so it's nice also to be connected with other reality in town. And last thing so that you was asking me about, uh, if I make um, um, personalization, mm-hmm. I can also we I started this year to make workshop for people. Mm-hmm. I have three level workshop, so you can come here and make your own candle, your own jewelry, or you can start working with clay, make your own mold, and then bringing at home your mold with your candle, and then in this mold you can put other material like water and make a nice cream. <laughs> or woman, you are so eyes. busy. Do you sleep yes. at night? Really, if I sleep, <laughs> I'm bringing new product. <laughs> it's my life. I love that. <laughs> oh my god! No, listen. I can already see you in a few ten years time. I can see you already with about three or four shops around Venice, oh, and we'll maybe <laughs> a, 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 maybe another six or seven around the world. I mean, <laughs> no, that would be great, wouldn't it? That Lisa? would be great. More around the world, so I yeah. can travel more. <laughs> well, travel. Oh yeah, that's excuse. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> For you were saying to make money, but right, a nice one. Yeah. So no, I would love my dream is to go in other country, like maybe an association call me, come here and help us to design product. We work this material. Would you like nice. to come to make up great with us? idea? Yeah, I would love. I we need, need to in we Denver, need to but... work, we need to work on that, Michaela. Oh, uh, yes, everybody, if you can help listen. me. Everybody yeah, everybody's listening. Listen. Yeah. Everybody's listening to the podcast. There are not that many 
but we're not a few, okay? Okay. Okay, we're not that many, but we got quite a lot. If anybody knows uh, anywhere in the world, Michela is not uh, racist, she's go anywhere. <laughs> she <laughs> go anywhere. Yeah. There has got an association that would like Michela to create some works for them, get in, co- in contact. Where can they find you, Michela? They what's can your find website? Me- uh, what's your website and your social medias? So my website is relightvenice.com mm-hmm. and my social media is Relight Venice. Fantastic. Well, listen, it was so beautiful talking to you. I need actually to come to your shop because my earrings need to be fixed, but I will I will find the time to come and find yes, it. Because I, I never get to wear them. I have them there. I want to wear them, but I can't because uh, they, they, there is something that I need to fix. So I, 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 oh, I need to find the time, but like you yes uh, but I will I, I swear I'm gonna come and then I'll end up buying loads of stuff because I was looking at the website and for the oh I like that oh I like that oh I like that <laughs> <laughs> she's I'm gonna walk out of the shop with like a bag of stuff well, Thank you. Thank you. it was so beautiful talking to you and you're so positive and it's nice to have positive people like you and I realize the more I interview Venetians the more I realize how many nice positive people there are in Venice you need to m- meet all together and uh, take over the city guys because uh, maybe you can help on that oh I I can do as in communication I will communicate for you guys (laughs) yeah I'll put everybody we'll have a a beautiful association of like uh, the resistance of Venice Uh, (laughs) that could be great brilliant yes (laughs) okay speak to you soon thank you so much Ciao, ciao. ciao 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 Thank you so much, Michela, for the wonderful chat. You can find Michela at www.relightvenice.com and on all social medias as Relight Venice. Thank you again for listening. Venice Talks podcast is a production of Sentire Media, created, produced and hosted by me, Monica Cesarato. Follow Venice Talks wherever you get your podcast. And if you want to book a food tour or a cooking experience with me, you can find me over at www.monicacesarato.com and on all social medias with the handle at Monica Cesarato, where you can follow my adventures around Venice. And don't forget, if you love this episode, please rate it and leave a review. It's very much appreciated. Hey, podcast producers and show hosts. Do you want to join a podcast network that celebrates all things Italian? At Sentiri Media, we understand the allure of Italy and its unique culture. Our devoted team of hosts and producers are all driven by their shared passion for Italy. And we work tirelessly to create the best lifestyle podcasts and content that will whisk you away to the very heart of Italy. With us, you can savor the mouth-watering flavors, get lost in the stories from the past, break down the cultural barriers, and truly immerse yourself in the vibrant traditions of this intoxicating country. If you have a great podcast idea or are already in production and would like to join Sentire Media, head over to sentiremedia.com. That's S-E-N-T-I-R-E media.com and find out how to submit your show.